Regrettable. That's still the word we have to use when talking about Flight 9. One of the most anticipated new milestones, the payload deployment, didn't happen due to an issue with the payload door. Now it's time to take a closer look at the design and mechanics of this system. What exactly went wrong? And how will SpaceX need to improve it moving forward? Let's dive into it on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Well, it's safe to say that the last Starship flight, while not entirely successful, still made a powerful impression. One moment in particular stood out among the highlights at T plus 15 minutes and 3 seconds. We were treated to a stunning view inside the Starship's payload bay. For the first time ever, footage revealed the payloads and the PEZ dispenser deployment system installed inside the spacecraft, even though these were just dummy payloads. Still, the excitement was undeniable. We also got our most comprehensive look yet at the layout and structure of the payload section itself. This is something many fans and observers had been hoping to see for quite some time. Unfortunately, the two previous Starship flights failed too early in the mission for any similar footage to be captured. So when we finally saw the interior on Flight 9, the excitement and anticipation skyrocketed. Everyone was expecting to see the payloads deployed just as the simulations and 3D animations had shown, cleanly, efficiently, and elegantly. But that expectation quickly turned to confusion when the mission passed the planned payload deployment window, and nothing happened. Soon after, the issue was revealed. The payload door had failed to open. Now that raises a pretty important question. Why? From what we saw before the flight, everything seemed to be working perfectly. Whether it was during testing or while the payloads were being loaded, the door appeared to function smoothly. So what went wrong when it mattered most during flight? There could be many possible explanations, but one particularly interesting analysis has gained attention on X. It came from an experienced engineer who specializes in designing submarine doors. He pointed out a fascinating parallel between his work and the aerospace world, noting the contrasting pressure dynamics involved in the two environments. He explained that underwater systems deal with compression pressure, or pressure from the outside pushing in, whereas spacecraft in the vacuum of space deal with expansion pressure, or internal pressure pushing out. This is why submarine doors typically open outward. They're sealed from the pressure of water pressing inward. Spacecraft doors, on the other hand, are usually designed to open inward, using internal pressure to press the door against the hull and maintain a seal. But here's where things get more complicated for Starship. Unlike the pressurized crew compartments of other spacecraft, Starship's payload bay isn't designed to be pressurized. That means it doesn't have any internal pressure to push the door outward or hold it tightly against the structure. Without that force, the door relies entirely on its mechanical actuator system for stability and movement. This becomes a serious issue in the vacuum of space. With no opposing pressure to help stabilize the door, it essentially becomes loose, making it vulnerable to shifts, wobbling, or even becoming jammed. The actuator mechanisms that open and close the door are now solely responsible for its movement, but they weren't designed to handle that level of instability on their own. If the door is slightly misaligned or under mechanical stress, the actuator could struggle or fail entirely just like we saw on Flight 9. And that's not all. The structural reinforcement of the payload door also appears to be lacking. Evidence of this goes all the way back to Flight 3, where the door seemed to be held in place with only a few weak support bars. That kind of setup might be fine for testing on the ground, but it's a major liability during flight. A door that isn't properly braced is not only harder to control, but it could also flex or shift under the forces of launch and maneuvering, potentially damaging surrounding systems or compromising the spacecraft's integrity. The risk increases even more if the door is forcibly opened in that state. Without adequate reinforcement, a malfunctioning payload door might scrape, jam, or even damage the internal deployment system. That could put the payloads themselves in danger and jeopardize the mission's success. So, what's the solution? SpaceX will need to add stronger structural reinforcements to stabilize the door. These reinforcements must be firm enough to hold the door in place during all phases of flight, yet flexible enough to work in concert with the actuator system. The goal is to create a design that allows for controlled, reliable opening and closing, even in the low-pressure environment of space. 
Better alignment, locking mechanisms, and actuator synchronization will likely be part of the fix. In addition, SpaceX may need to revisit the entire payload bay design philosophy. If pressurizing the bay is not an option, then every component, especially the door, must be fully optimized for vacuum conditions. That could include new materials, better hinges, advanced sensors to detect alignment issues, or even alternate deployment systems that aren't as dependent on a single large door. The analysis about pressure dynamics and structural stability sheds a lot of light on why this issue occurred, and it serves as a reminder of just how complex these systems are. So what do you think? Was the design of the Starship's payload door flawed from the start? Do you see any other potential issues that might need to be addressed? and what should SpaceX prioritize in the next round of upgrades? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Then, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date on every step of SpaceX's development journey. Solving the payload door issue is absolutely essential for SpaceX as it sets its sight on increasingly ambitious missions. This isn't just a minor technical glitch, it's a key piece of the puzzle that will determine whether Starship can fulfill its full potential. First and foremost, fixing the door is crucial for completing the immediate task of deploying demonstration payloads, something that was not achieved during the last flight. Proving this capability is a foundational step before SpaceX can move on to more advanced mission profiles. Once that hurdle is cleared, the next milestone will be launching Starship into a true orbital trajectory and successfully deploying real operational payloads. This will mark Starship's first major contribution to satellite constellations or commercial payloads, whether for SpaceX itself or for external customers. Achieving this will build trust, demonstrate technological maturity, and open the door for commercial partnerships and revenue-generating missions. Beyond satellite deployment, the payload bay will also play a critical role in enabling SpaceX's vision of in-orbit refueling. Ship-to-ship -ship fuel transfer systems rely heavily on well-functioning payload bay mechanisms to house and deploy fuel transfer components. Components. Without a reliable door system, such operations could be compromised or even impossible. But perhaps the most significant goal tied to this fix is long-distance spaceflight, much like missions to the Moon and eventually Mars. These missions will require Starship to carry not only crew, but large amounts of cargo, equipment, and infrastructure. Once the ship reaches its destination, the payload door must open properly to unload essential gear. Whether it's a lunar rover, habitat module, or scientific equipment, a malfunction at this stage could jeopardize the entire mission. In many ways, successful payload deployment becomes the final confirmation that a deep space mission has achieved its goals. Timing is also critical. SpaceX isn't looking decades into the future. It's aiming for uncrewed missions to the moon and possibly Mars as soon as next year. That means issues like the payload door need to be completely resolved before the year is out. There's no room for delay if SpaceX SpaceX wants to stay on schedule for Artemis support missions or future Mars demonstrations. In summary, solving the payload door issue is about much more than fixing a mechanical problem. It's a fundamental requirement that connects to nearly every major objective SpaceX has, from commercial operations in low Earth orbit, to building orbital infrastructure, to pioneering human exploration of other worlds. How the company addresses this challenge in the coming months will have a major impact on the pace and success of the Starship program. Let's watch closely to see how they handle it. Meanwhile, closer to home, earlier this year, NASA's Psyche spacecraft hit a snag when its electric thrusters shut down back in April. After an unexpected thruster shutdown in early April, mission engineers have decided to switch to a backup propellant line to get the spacecraft's electric propulsion back online. The problem began when pressure dropped in the primary line feeding xenon propellant to Psyche's Hall effect thrusters. By late April, NASA confirmed that a valve component in that line is no longer operating as expected and is obstructing the flow of xenon to the thrusters, which caused the pressure loss and subsequent engine shutdown. Engineers Engineers explored several potential fixes and on May 28th announced they would activate a secondary propellant feed line. Initial tests show this backup line is working smoothly. NASA now expects to restart the thrusters by mid-June and plans to keep a similar valve in the backup line open at all times to prevent the same issue from recurring. Once the electric engines are running again, Psyche will continue its journey to the metal-rich asteroid Psyche, using a planned Mars gravity assist in May of 2026 to accelerate its voyage. 
The spacecraft aims to arrive in orbit around the asteroid in August of 2029. There, its suite of instruments, which includes imagers, spectrometers, and magnetometers, will map Psyche's surface, measure its composition, and probe its magnetic field. Scientists believe that Psyche may be the exposed core of an early planetesimal, giving us a rare glimpse into the building blocks of planetary formation. Despite this recent setback, Psyche's mission remains on track. The switch to the backup propellant line highlights the value of redundancy and careful planning in deep space exploration. There are still many hurdles ahead, but NASA's rapid identification of the issue and its solution reinforce confidence in the mission's success. We'll keep watching as Psyche thrusters come back to life and the spacecraft resumes its remarkable three-and-a-half-year trek to one of the solar system's most intriguing bodies. Continuous updates will follow as NASA's team works to steer Psyche ever closer to its historic destination. And finally for today, let's turn to an update on China's Tianwen-2 mission. On May 28th, China launched Tianwen-2 atop a Long March 3B. This mission aims to retrieve samples from the near-Earth asteroid Komo'o Aleba, designated 2016H03, using a lander with scooping and hopping capabilities. After a 2027 Earth flyby to return samples, Tianwen-2 will head for Comet 311 p slash pan stars in the mid-2030s, an object in the main belt with multiple dust tails. Success will make China the third nation to complete an interplanetary sample return and extend its planetary exploration roadmap beyond Tianwen-1's Mars Triumph to planned missions to Mars, with Tianwen-3 and Jupiter or Uranus in Tianwen-4. Back in the U.S., NASA's Mars Sample Return Program faces delays and budget pressures, even as White House proposals threaten further cuts. Musk has suggested that if those plans stall, SpaceX's Starship could haul large payloads of Martian rock more cheaply, though Starship itself is still proving its reliability through rapid flight tests. With Psyche racing to reignite its thrusters, Tianwen-2 speeding toward its asteroid quarry, and NASA and SpaceX jockeying for Mars sample return roles, the next decade promises fierce competition and collaboration in solar system exploration. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.